Hello, everybody. We are so glad that you are here today for our new to group scuba Zoom. We're going to uh, jump right in here this morning. We had a little technical difficulty, so sorry we're a couple minutes late. We even tested it beforehand and it just happens. So uh, I'm Sharon on the BBS team and we've got a bunch of our, our team here to be with us today. So if they can kind of give a quick shout out. Jody. Hey, I, this is Jody. <laughs> and we got Tracy out there somewhere. Hi, everybody. And Julia. Hi, welcome. And Amy. Hey, guys. And we've got Phil. From How's our it going? Team. And Jill. Hey, everyone. Welcome. And I think Joni's on with us, too. Hi. <laughs> and who else is in your room, Jill? Susan? I'm here. Awesome. Welcome. Anybody else in there? I think, Great. I think we've got everyone. Awesome. Well, now that you all know a little bit about our team, we're going to find out who's here. So we're going to launch a poll um, and Julia is going to help us with that. Yeah, so you should see a poll on your screen now. There's three questions there. You want to go ahead and answer those. Who are you? What month is your VBS? And have you used group VBS? So we'll give you a couple seconds to respond to those just so we can get to know you a little bit better. Looks like that's mostly everybody. I'll end this poll and share the results. So you can see that on your screen, we've got 61% first time VBS director majority in June and July. And have you used group VBS? 74% yes, 26% no. So welcome everybody. Awesome. Well, now that we know who's here, we are gonna dive in. We have a lot of questions that were submitted and we know that there are friends who wanted to be here today, but can't. And so we're gonna cover all of them and then we'll share out the video afterwards. And we've kind of grouped our questions into buckets and categories. And as always, feel free to throw a, a question into the chat. But if you did submit a question, we have, think we've encapsulated into our time together today, but we do wanna make sure that your questions get answered. So. Jody, let's start by uh, talking about first-time VBS directors. We have more first-time VBS directors than ever this season, not just on this call, but in general. And I'm going to let you run with our, our first-time director section. Absolutely. Well, we're just so glad you're here. Big round of applause to you for taking on such a, a huge uh, undertaking as VBS. We know it just has such great impact. And we're just really glad you're here and you're part of our, our little scuba family here on screen, um, coming to learn more. So we here's a question that we got. I've never directed a BBS before and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. This is my first time being in charge. Help, I guess that's a question. Help is a question, right? <laughs> so you are in the right place. First of all, reaching out and networking is exactly what you should be doing. It's the very, very best thing to do. So we're glad you're here. This is the team here, the group team, and also all our other friends in ministry that are here are here to support. So welcome, we are so, so glad you're here. And the first thing you need to do is take a deep breath because it's all gonna be fine. So just breathe in and breathe out. It's all gonna be great. So that's for the help. Um, another question, where do I begin? That's a really, really great question. Where do I begin? If you're new to group especially, you'll wanna watch the How It Works video that is on your DVD. Um, it's also available online. And you'll want to know just generally how it works, how the flow of the day happens, what the stations, how they all work together, what the intention is for each thing, because every part of your BBS is there for a reason. So you really want to um, get a sense of that. And that'll give you the big picture of watching that DVD, watching that video, the how it works video. The next thing you're going to want to do is look at that director's, the ultimate director's go-to guide and just read through it. Sit down with a cup of coffee and just walk through it because it really takes you through why every part of the program is there, what you'll need to do. It'll really get your brain kind of organized and ready to approach directing BBS. 
So we cannot recommend that one ahead of time. Chances are, if you have a question, the answer is there. We try to put all the all the answers in there. Um, I would also say look at the station leader manuals because if a station leader comes to you and says, "Hey, I need 15 cool noodles," you'll have a sense of what those are for, why they might be needing them, or if they ask for something very strange like socks. We sometimes use rolled up socks in games. Um, so you may want to have a sense of like, okay, I understand what they're doing. So it's really good, even though you're handing those off, you don't have to lead that. It's a great idea to have an idea of what's going on in those stations. Um, that also leads into recruiting. This is a great time to be starting on recruiting. Identify people in your church who have different gifts, who helped at BBS or in kids ministry before, and start actively recruiting. And we think face-to-face -face is the best way to do that. So begin to to put your team together. So those are three great things to do to begin. Um, another thing that we like to, to ask some people is, what do you wish you knew the first time you did BBS? What are the, the things that veterans can, can teach us? And here's what they say, day one will be crazy, but day two will be super smooth. And I can tell you after directing BBS for like 30 years, that is 100% true. Day one, you go in and things are going to be a little bit, a little bit crazy just because the kids are coming in and they may not know the routine. They are getting to know their crew and people are trying to figure out where things are. The next day, it's almost like night and day, the second day things. And then as the week goes on, it just gets easier and easier. So expect the unexpected on that first day. My second bit of advice, and this comes from veterans as well, is if you're new to group, your very first year, do it exactly as it's written. Do Because again, we've tested this and made the mistakes so you don't have to. So do the program as it's written and you'll discover maybe some nuances that, hey, for our church culture, this little bit worked better. We wanted to add more songs. We wanted fewer songs. Or we really only had time for preschoolers to do one of those games instead of three. So do it as it's written the first year and then you'll understand better um, little changes that you'll need to make. And, and it's our hope and prayer and experience that those changes will be really small. So those are some bits of advice on just jumping in and getting started as a director. Sharon. So, yes. We're going to so, segue. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. You're next. Okay, we're going to segue into people who are veteran VBS directors, which we have a lot of you with us today, but you are using group VBS for the first time. And so we want to give a special welcome to you. And here are a couple of the questions that we had um, that you all were asking. It's my first time using group. I'm excited to learn more. I've never used group, but I've heard good things. Want to learn more. How do we best plan and prepare as a new leader using a group BBS? Are the lessons broken out by age group? So to get everybody on the same page, we're going to take a couple of minutes to just talk about the basics of how a group BBS works. It may be a little bit different than what you've done in the past. And I'm going to ask Amy if you'll bring up our general, um, what's the general format or how it works kind of graphic on screen there? You know, how does our VBS program work. You'll see that we're gonna start at Sing and Play Splash. That's our opening time. Uh, then we're going to be ju jumping into our elementary rotations, Bible Adventures, Imagination Station, Sticky Scripture, Reef Rack, and then everyone comes together for snack time at Tidal Treats. And while that's happening, our preschool would be having their own preschool age appropriate rotations at Tide Pools Preschool and then elementary groups gather one more time for the fantastic finale, which is one of my favorites. It's large group with worship, wow experiments that really brings the day together. And our preschoolers wrap up their day in a little more age appropriate um, closing circle time because they're a little bit tired after three hours of lots of fun. So if we can just show the preschool rotation, what you see on screen here is elementary, and then we'll see the preschool rotation. And then we'll also take a look at our daily schedule. Our rotations are 20 minutes, except for the opening and closing time is 25 minutes. So you can kind of see how that looks. The schedules are customizable. They're on the in your go-to director guide. They're also available on your clip art. 
CD or in the digital download center if you use that. And there is a separate complete schedule just for preschool as well, but we're kind of giving you that big picture here. So 20 minute rotations, except for that opening and closing that are 25 minutes. And then the Tide Pool preschool program is running concurrent with elementary after they've been to that opening session. Another question that you asked is what ages are able to participate? And another question was also, we've um, included babies through teens in the past. So Scuba VBS has been designed to serve kids age three through sixth grade with an option to include middle school and high school by using the Anchor Youth Leader Manual. Now you can see an image on screen of that leader manual. This is the only manual that does not come in your starter kit because there are many churches that use their students as volunteers in VBS and so they don't need that, uh, that additional manual. You can also use at my church, I use the preschool manual to um, use it as a jumping off point for materials for our nursery. We provide a nursery for the volunteers at our VBS. And so we just take the preschool material and use that to create a little toddler area. And of course, the music is great for all the ages. Another question that you asked for is what, what is the recommended duration for SCUBA VBS? SCUBA is designed to be a, th a three hour, five day program. However, there is flexibility within that. If you, another question that, which leads right into that is what if I don't have enough time to do every rotation? We do an evening VBS, for instance. Can we combine any of the stations so that we can do all of the lessons and the activities? And the answer is yes. You can trim some time out of the opening and closing by maybe doing one or two fewer songs. It, a lot of times if you're doing an evening VBS, people have had dinner, you don't need to do the snack rotation. So those are some suggestions that we would recommend, but you definitely can shorten out. You could play one last game. There's definite ways to um, bring the time down so you can fit it to whatever your allotted time is for your program. Another question that we got is, we only do four days of VBS. What days do you recommend keeping? And with that, we recommend keeping day one, because that kind of sets up the week and what we're going after with the, the Bible points and the themes. Day two and day four this year, um, we always recommend keeping day four because that's the day that we bring, have our big Jesus Bible presentation. And if you're going to uh, invite kids to make a decision for Jesus, we recommend waiting until day four so you have time to build relationships with kids. And this year in Bible, we are using a really cool tool to create um, an environment for kids to go into the belly of the whale of Jonah out of black plastic. And then that comes back on day four to be the tomb for Jesus. And so we, of course, want you to do the Jesus day, but since that supply is used twice and it's an incredible experience, we'd recommend leaving out day three or five, and it would be your choice as to what you want to do with that. Another question that came in is what support and materials are included in the program? On screen, you can see your starter kit has 13 station leader, manual, station leader manuals, so everything you need for your elementary and preschool leader leaders. You also are going to have your clip art CD, your music CDs, DVDs, sticky scripture DVDs, and then a sample of all of the student materials. And so when you think about um, having materials for your leaders, you've got everything you need there. It's just your additional student items that you would need to order as far as if you're serving 20 kids or 200 kids or whatever in those items. And we'll highlight some of those in a little bit. There was also a question about um, what kind of support do we have in the program? We have a whole team of people at group and in the chat, they're going to put some contact information. You can email us, you can call us. We have a product support team. So we are here, we are in it with you from the beginning until the end of your VBS. And I'm gonna pause right there just to see if there's any questions in the chat so far. Tracy or Julia? I think you're answering things so well, Sharon. People are, people uh, they submitted, they're waiting for their question, their answer to come up, I think. Awesome, awesome. Well, Jody, we did get several questions um, asked as, when people registered about how does group differ from Lifeway VBS? This is their first time using group. And could you kind of dig into that a little bit for us? Sure. And I would say, I would say Lifeway or other VBSs that might have a, just a different flow, a different model. And um, it, that's a great question to know what, what's going to be different because it can feel like you're jumping into kind of a different world. 
Well, the first thing you, you'll want to know is that everything at group focuses on one learning philosophy called REAL. And we have a slide with that, R-E-A-L. And every single activity, even if it's a game, it's going to be relational, it's going to be experiential, it's going to have life application, and its goal is leading to lifelong learning. And that's something that we take really seriously. Um, there is no fluff. Nothing is there just because. And so that's going to feel really different. You will see, um, you'll, you'll get a sense of that being different. We're, we also have a link in the chat to a video that might explain real a little bit more in depth than we have uh, opportunity and time for this morning. But um, that's, a, that's a key differentiator between any other program that you will have used and, and group. Um, we, we really want your BBS to be an intentional time of ministry. We want kids to obviously have Great, great fun, but real is really at the heart of that. Um, this program is going to make no assumptions about. Um, this program is going to make no assumptions that kids have any Bible knowledge. We know that not a lot of kids are at church every week. Even if they come to church, they may only come once a month. Um, so we we don't have kids reading long passages of scripture. We don't assume any prior Bible knowledge because a lot of VBSs are outreach. So just the language that you'll find in your materials are very friendly to kids who may never have set foot in church before. So we make no assumptions with that. One thing that will be really different is that we use small mixed age crews of about five kids and one teenager or um, adult crew leader rather than an age graded classroom. And that can feel really, really, really different for people. Um, but that's going to be a different, we're going to get to crew leaders in a little bit, I believe. We have some great testimonials from people who may have been skeptical at first, but now say, I will never go back to age-graded classrooms for BBS. This is just the, the way to do it. So that'll feel very different. Um, leaders are going to only lead in their areas of giftedness. So instead of me being the third grade teacher and I'm going to lead the Bible story, a game, a craft for that age level, and maybe a, a Bible memory game, um, I might only lead Bible and I will lead the same Bible adventure four times according to that schedule that Sharon had popped in earlier. So that means if I love teaching Bible or if I love science and I'm gonna do imagination station, that's the only thing I'm doing. Kids will come to me in their small groups to uh, have that. So that's a great thing for your leaders. They get to only lead the part that they like best which is very, very cool. Uh, you will notice a big difference in the way the Bible story is taught. Our Bible stories are really taught using this real philosophy. And Deep Bible Adventures is a whole new animal. It's not kids sitting still or just doing an action to something or looking at a poster. It's kids actually, they get in there like Elijah did and they build the little altars to have the contest with the prophets of Baal. And they uh, celebrate when when God wins. Uh, we make the storm that Jesus calms and get to experience that peace that they do. And really, the the point behind that is that there's an emotion in each of these Bible stories, and we want kids to have that emotional connection because we know that that's going to help them remember that long after VBS. And you will notice the questions that you ask are different. So instead of asking, what was the name of the sea that Jesus and his disciples were on? We might say, think of a time that you felt really afraid. Tell about that. And then we, we process through what it means to have Jesus with us in those scary times when we need comfort. So we ask open-ended questions that allow every kid to share. And share. they may be sharing things about their life. They may be sharing um how, how God has impacted their life or what that might look like. Leaders share as well. So kids get to discover what it looks like to live as a follower of Jesus and a friend of God. So there's a lot of connection and sharing and thinking that happens rather than just reciting back the facts of the Bible story that we heard. So we all, another difference We get to do the story. The first day we acted out the story of Elijah and the way he saw Amy, we can hold that for just a moment. Thanks. Pause, pause that for one second. Yep. I, 
this is a great little quick clip that um, is going to show you what happens, um, what we mean by interactive learning. And again, active learning just doesn't mean kids raise their hand or call out an answer. So do we have time for the video? Yeah, should we finish up? Do you want to do multi-age? Finish up with sure. multi-age? or Sure, sure. And you'll see this in Deep Bible Adventures. This might be a great thing to look for in the clip is, as we said, that um, multi-age. Um, that's going to feel really different for a lot of us. And uh, I remember the first time we did it, it was, you know, and 30, almost 30 years ago, and nobody was doing it then. Now it, now it seems like uh, more and more people are, have jumped on and are getting why this is so powerful. So the first year that you're going to do, if you're new to group and you've never done this before, you've used a different curriculum and you're ready to do multi-age, the hardest thing may not, may be just getting adults to buy this. Kids will jump in and go there. Kids, it's like a big family experience for kids. Um, but the adults are the ones who tend to not be the believers. So what we would say, our best advice to you is go into it with a can-do attitude. Say, we're going to try something new this year, and we're all in this adventure together. Let's just try it. Your attitude will speak volumes to the people in your church, to parents, um, to your volunteers who may be skeptical. So if you say, you know what? We're just going to do it. We're going to try it. It's going to be great. So I would say, first of all, have a really, really great can-do attitude as you embark on this adventure. And um, look for the positives, too. I think you will see um, kids naturally making friends with kids who are in different age levels than they are. It's, it's just a really great thing. We've seen it over the years be so powerful. So we would ask you to just look at it as an adventure that we're all going on together. Do kids have to be mixed age groups? No, you don't have to do anything. We highly recommend it because we've seen the good that comes out of it. Your discipline problems will be next to zero uh, because kids aren't competing for attention with their peers. You will see younger kids looking up to older kids. You will see older kids becoming mentors. Even the kids who you didn't think could do that, they will set the example for the younger kids. Um, it's just a really powerful thing. So we highly recommend it, but no, you do not have to do it. It's not mandated, but we really want you to just look at it with a really, really positive attitude and just, it's five days. We can try something new. And I think you'll be surprised at seeing the relationships that kids build with each other in some really surprising ways. Jody, I always like to share my own personal story from my church where I serve now. I've been on the team there for 13 years. And when I came on, the church had done classroom-based BBS. And we, in preschool ministry where I lead, we did the crew thing. It was great. And several years in our elementary uh, pastor was like, wow, it seems like it's smooth. And then finally they tried it. And now they're like, we'll never go back. Like you just, mm -hmm. and I would say one way to take a baby step into it, if you've never done mixed age is to mix half of the ages. And so mix your, you know, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade and mix your first, second, and third and kind of take a baby step. And then the next year go a little deeper till you get to the point where you truly have that mixed age group. That's maybe a little gentler way if it would be really challenging for your church to, to go there. But Julia, I think one of our, our, um, other things we can share is just like testimonies from people, you being on our social media team, what are some things that you've heard from people? Yes. Yeah, so I've pulled just a couple. I won't read all of them because that would take up our whole time. Um, but Beth Hickson said, mixed life is life-changing or mixed is life-changing. Older kids act like leaders. Younger kids think they're too cool because they are with the older kids. I wouldn't do it any other way now, but I was skeptical at first. And I will say there's quite a few comments that will start off like that. I was very skeptical in my church, but as soon as we tried it, then you read all these comments of people floored about it. Um, Clyde Beaver said, mixed age groups are the only way to go. Younger kids love being with older kids and older kids feel empowered to guide the younger ones. Too many people think they have to keep ages together, but believe me, there is also less drama with mixed age groups. Wouldn't change it ever. It works three exclamation points. So <laughs> you can search our Facebook group for these kind of comments too and read what other people have said. There's a ton in there, um, but those are just a couple examples. And, and I will 
also when kid, when people one one reservation that people have is well friends want to be together and what we've done with this is if there are two friends that really need to be together we'll put them in different crews but crews that travel together so they can still see their friend over there but when it comes time for talking in the crew the conversation just goes deeper because they don't feel like I need to filter out what I'm going to say because my best friend is in here or I don't need to be cool for my best friend. They're in different crews having different connections and different conversations there. So that's another way to baby step into it to get to help overcome that obstacle of, well, my kid needs to be with their best friend. So, great stuff. Good, good. All right. Well, we are going to um, dive into some specific station questions, and we're going to start by Deep Bible Adventures, which you see on screen here. And one of the questions that we got was, what are some new ideas on presenting the Bible story? Well, the great news is when using a group VBS, we have that all planned out for you. You are going to get five interactive, engaging Deep Bible Adventures ready to go for you in your station leader manuals. And so we're going to take a peek at the elementary um uh, five day story. So let's roll that, Amy. We get to do the story. The first day we acted out the story of Elijah and the way he saw that God is real. We listened to God. I heard him say he loves me. The second day we climbed into a fish's belly, just like Jonah. Ew, it was so smelly. Day three, we made a stormy sea. But don't worry, Jesus calmed it down. Day four, we went into Jesus' tomb. It was like a big cave. Guess what? It was empty. We celebrated death is not forever. The last day, we met Lydia and helped her dye some fabric purple. I've never done that before. We prayed that all our friends would know Jesus. So in group makes it really easy for the Bible, for all station leaders to prepare literally in minutes instead of hours, because in the station leader manual for Bible and all the other stations, there are quick step-by-step -step instructions, lots of pictures in there. And for Deep Bible Adventures, we have a short video that shows you how easy it is to set up the Bible environment for each day. And I have to tell you, that is a favorite for kids. They love to be surprised as to what that Bible adventure room is going to look like. So in the chat, our team is putting a link in there for you to um, the setup for Bible adventures. Well, Jody, we this year have a new station called Sticky Scripture that we are so excited about. And I'm it's going to let you um, talk about that. And then we will um, take a little sneak peek at some video. So go ahead. Cool. Well, Sticky Scripture, we're so, so, so excited about because it really came from you. We talked with friends in ministry and said, what are what are your frustrations with, with ministry, with kids? What are you seeing? What are you worried about? And one thing that we heard again and again was kids do not have a Bible. Bible literacy is just low. My kids don't bring a Bible. They don't know how to use a Bible. They don't understand the words in the Bible. And so we thought we have a great captive audience during the summer. What better time to jump into really making God's word stick? And we're not talking so much about just being able to grow to recite a memory verse. We want kids to know the words, God's word. We want them to know that it comes from the Bible. We want them to know where it's found in the Bible. We want the Bible, God's word, to feel really accessible, something that kids want to kick up and go to again and again and again. And so that's really where Sticky Scripture came from. Uh, it's a it's a Bible memory station. So kids will come in and they will watch part of a video that explores what a verse is, the meaning of that verse, maybe any hard words they'll explore. Um, maybe we're talking about peace. And so we do it a game that goes with the video where our hearts are racing. And then we say, oh, that's what it feels like when you don't have peace. Well, there's a verse in the Bible about peace. And then we'll go into that. We pause the video and actually open up this amazing kid-friendly um, Gospel of John taken from the hands-on Bible. And every kid gets their very own so they can mark it. They can highlight it. They can put a sticky note in there, get the sticky scripture connection. And they, they so it's a kid, I like to say it's a kid-sized bite of the Bible. Um, when we give a third grader, for example, a huge, big, fat Bible with thousands of pages, it can feel really daunting. But when you have this kid-friendly, small one book of the Bible, suddenly it feels like, oh, I can, I can do this. I can find something on page 40 as opposed to page 1,000 and 
15 or something. So it's we watched this at our field test, and it was just so cool to see kids just zoom in and be so excited to have their book that they could mark and they could look at. Um, we show kids, we follow along with our finger and read a verse. So kids who are good readers, uh, literacy is down in our nation. In case many of you, many of you have probably seen this in your churches. So reading out loud can be even daunting for kids. So we will have the leader read it. Kids can follow along with their finger. And then we learn actions that go along with the video. We return to the video, do some wrap up there, and um, learn some actions that go with the, with the words of the verse. So kids are getting to do so many different things. And then, of course, at the end of the week, they get to take that Bible home and continue to explore that with their family. So it's just a super exciting thing. We, we again, testing this was amazing to see the kids really genuinely get it and be excited about the Bible instead of intimidated by the Bible. So Cody, we, should we give them a, a sneak peek yeah, from Field Nest? So let's take a look. Kids see the verse on a poster, in a Bible, and on screen. Kids take home scripture in their very own Bible book and on a Bible memory buddy. I've got one right here. Kids interact with a video, getting their whole body involved in learning and understanding. Conversations allow kids to connect scripture to practical, real life situations. Kid-friendly language, animation, and even scripture skills make this approachable for all learners. So a question that came up was how do we do how do we do sticky scripture without using the Gospel of John? And I, I understand we all have budget issues, but this book is so valuable to kids. One one of the days at our field test, we had not we didn't have enough book. We'd have a new kid come in and we didn't have enough for his crew. So the crew leader said, Well, they can just share until somebody ran to get one from the next room. And this one boy was just kind of out. You could tell everyone loved having their own and highlighting it and, and they were using their sticky notes. And it was not the same experience to share. So I would say they really need this book. It, it And they're so excited to take them home. So this was a great thing to have seniors in your church to sponsor. I think there are seniors in church who say they have that. Kids see the verse that kids, they have the same concern that kids are not into the Bible. And so to get every child this one Gospel of John is very important. Um, I've also heard of people saying, well, we're just going to get kids a whole Bible. We can get those somewhere else really cheap. Again, this is so age appropriate. The, the colored art that's in these books, little devotions, little call outs that are in the book, it's meant for kids and it's meant to engage kids. So again, I really, our heart is that scripture is, is really accessible to every child. And that's what this gospel of John will do. So I would say look for a way to make it happen. That's my, that's my best advice. Awesome. Well, Jody, uh, and Amy, there we go. Now we can, you can get a sneak yeah. peek actually to the inside of that gospel of John. I love the fact that it's four color. There's little devotion things in there. It's just so much more than just words on a page. It really comes to life for kids. Another thing we want to dig into is Imagination Station, Jody. Now, this is a station that is very new for people. Most VBS programs have crafts, and we have several questions about where are the crafts, what is Imagination Station, what are crew teaching kits, how will the new crew teaching kit work for Imagination Station, are all the activities still doable for churches that may have a cost issue or a small budget? So do you want to dig into that a little bit for us? Sure. Well, Imagination Station, similar to Sticky Scripture, many years ago, many years ago, we we ta were talking with friends in ministry like you who said, yeah, crafts are really, really great. We do those at BBS every year. But number one, older older kids are kind of less engaged. Um, they, they've done all these kind of crafts before, like a foam cross and a bookmark and this. They've done that before. They're not really there anymore. They want something different. And a lot of it gets left behind. And so it feels like a waste. And so we kind of took that and noodled on that and knew that science is really big. Science fairs, maker fairs, things like that, things like that are really, really big where kids actually get to do some really interesting science experiments. And science, of course, connects with God, of course. 
uh, because God created all those things that work together that we call science. And so that's where Imagination Station was born several years ago. So we do not do crafts. Instead, we are engaging kids in these um, discovery of God's work, God's world, and through their using their imaginations and doing these experiments. And so kids will come to Imagination Station and they're learning about something this year related to undersea. So it might be tides and currents or phytoplankton, which is just fun to say when you're a little kid. Little tiny things that are unseen in the ocean, but are real, which ties with our, our point about God being real. So they'll do some large group experiments, but then in their crew, they will do small group experiments where kids actually get to be the ones touching the things and adding the water and making the little boats go. And so they love that. Again, we just field tested. I'll let you in on a, a secret. We just field tested our 2025 program. And watching kids again get involved in Imagination Station and just zooming in around these items. So every crew then has this Imagination Station crew teaching kit. And it has everything that you need to do seven different experiments because there are some days that we do two. And that breaks down to, Tracy, did you say it's around like 50 cents per kid per experiment or something yeah, like that? It's under 50 cents per kid per experience. Per experience that they get to do. And we have everything from paper that dissolves and they get to open a, a sand dollar to see what's inside because many kids don't know what that is. We explore super sand and all kinds of amazing things that they actually get to do in their small group. So this is not a big upfront demo that kids watch and ooh and ah. They're the ones who actually get to do that. And that's powerful. They they go, they get so excited every day to come in and say, what are we going to do next? So well, Jody, if, let's show them. Let's show them what they're going to sneak see. Got it. Day one, we got to do two experiments. First, we got to see stuff move with an invisible force. Wow! Then, we explored invisible things in the ocean to discover God is a friend who's real. Day two, we experimented with different ways to travel in the ocean to discover how God's love gives us power. Day three, this is another day with two experiments. It's so cool how the ocean is always moving and changing. We can trust God because God doesn't change. Day four, we sank and floated stuff. But God's words, they floated on top of the water just to show us God is a friend forever. Day five, we figured out just how big the oceans are. We fit so many drops of water in one little heart to show us how big God's love is for everyone. Kids have so much fun doing these amazing jaw-dropping experiments. They're a blast to lead. Plus, I appreciated the short online teaching videos while I was preparing. I got to see the experiments in action, and that really helped. So, so imagination, imagination Station is, it replaces crafts. So we do get the question, so how do I fit in a craft? Well, our preschoolers do have crafts. We have a craft book for preschoolers because we have discovered that they like the, the hands-on things. Again, they haven't done all the crafts yet that these older kids have done year after year. Um, but I would just challenge, again, try something new. Your kids will not miss doing crafts. They will, they will come to Imagination Station every day, eager to see what do we do next. Yes. I understand that we have some questions in the chat. So Tracy, do you want to call a couple of those out for us? Uh, yeah, Sarah's asking about back on mixed age crews. Um, mm -hmm. How do you filter in guests with the mixed age crews, especially if they won't go anywhere else, but with their friend who brought them? I think it's a great question. I think it's a great question. Every year when we field test, I make the crews a little bit, some leave some crews a little bit smaller um, if you can. And we, if, if it's really a do or die, let the friend, the new friend go with the friend who brought them, 100%. If you can put them in two side-by-side -side crews, that's best and say they're gonna do everything together. They're gonna to play games together. They're gonna to go to imagination station together. They'll be a Bible together, but they will not be in the same crew. So I would say you're gonna be in crew one, you're in crew two, they're gonna do everything together. If they really wanna be side by side, I would say that's fine, but give the other option first and see what happens. 
And Jody, uh, we do that at our church too, where we leave, we don't fill the crews to five. We'll have some that are a three and then a four so that you do have that capacity to quickly add them in. Yeah. yeah. Another question was on the uh, Gospel of John book. This is from Raj. She says, we have a lot of children ages 4K through first grade. What do you recommend for them instead of the Gospel of John book? Go ahead. So we... There's a um, Tide Pool Preschool Bible Pack. So preschoolers have their own age-appropriate Bible page. We definitely would not expect them to be reading the Gospel of John. And so there is a preschool-specific piece that is the Bible page for those. And those are sold in a 10-pack. The, the elementary Gospel of Johns are sold individually, but we do have bulk pricing available for those. So we've got age-appropriate solution. Any other questions in the chat? Uh, one more just came in. How many crews do you put together? We run about 200 kids in our VBS. We, we so, put, go ahead, Sherry. You put, I was going to say, some of it depends on the space for your station rotations at my church. Our limitation is how many kids we can fit in our Bible adventure room or in imagination station. And so every church is going to be a little different because you need to have enough space for a quarter of those elementary kids and a quarter of your preschool kids to travel to the rotation. So what would you add to that, Jody? I would agree. I would say just remember that the more bodies you have in a room, it's going to take longer, just noise. It's just harder to get everyone because we're doing things that are active. I like to have, and again, it really depends on your space, um, about 30 kids, which is, you know, four or five crews, um, that because you have crew leader bodies as well. <laughs> so five crews is nice. Um, but again, if you have, a, a preschool crews aren't part of that. So preschool has their own program, if that makes sense. So for elementary, um, yeah, for Bible, sticky scripture and things like that, I would say I like to have five, maybe six, but it's going to depend on your space and the extra staff you have to help hand out supplies with fast and things like that. And if you have a larger VBS, like at our church, we have to run two Bibles, two imagination stations. So it's really easy to keep the group smaller by just adding a double station. So you would have two Bibles running at the same time, two imagination, two game. You know, the idea of building relationships with kids works best when they can be in a smaller group and you don't have to have 20 crews traveling together at one time. That would be a lot. So it's a great question. Well, let's- um, I've been teaching. <laughs> would you say, Jody? turn into crowd control more than actually yes change. yes 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 we are going to um, dive into decorating here so on screen you'll see a picture of what the main set looks like at some point and what the first question that came is came in is we're a small team how can we keep decorating simple and the one thing that we would say is you can do as little or as much as you want to do but if you put up the beautiful coral fabric um, fabric wall hanging and you mount your giant Bible memory buddy posters onto foam core or um, cardboard, your main set stage is done. Um, there are directions on how to build a 3D boat out of cardboard and all these different corals, but it doesn't have to be all of that. And one of the things that um, I challenge you is that we hear and see from VBS directors that are doing all kinds of things, um, but I want I challenge you to think about you know, when it comes to your budget, what you spend on your decorations should not be more than what you're spending on student resources. You know, after our VBSs, our decorations get passed on to the next church, or eventually they might end up in the garbage. But what you send home with kids is going to remind them of the Bible stories, the experiences they had, and the Bible points. And those are things that are going to change kids' lives. The decorations might wow them when they walk in, but it's God's word and the experience they have around that is what's going to change their lives forever. So be sure that you invest in things that matter most. And another question was, what are some of the must-have decorating things? And we have several key items that we like to refer to as decorations that teach. So those would be your Bible point posters, your Bible story posters, your um, Bible verse poster, the talk starter questions for Imagination Station, the giant decorating posters. Those poster packs are all used by the station leaders very intentionally during the station rotations. And those are things that are, are create a low prep, but a big wow within that environment. 
And great visuals really help kids understand more quickly what we're teaching and learning about. And so you don't have to go super crazy. And I think one thing, you know, Julie, who's on our social media platforms all the time, like we see these videos and pictures that sometimes they might overwhelm the rest of us that are like, wow, I can't do that. And don't, don't be sucked into it. You, your church having to look like that church, every church is unique and different. And I'm Jody going to ask you to pop in on this too, because I know you've got some thoughts as well. Yeah, it's, I think it can feel really easy, especially with social media to compare and kids will remember those relationships that they made within their crew way more than a wow set that you created. Um, I think putting up the big backdrop and a handful of, you know, the posters and things like that is great. I, I honestly think I, I really would, my heart is for people to invest in those relationships with kids. Uh, that matters to kids, especially kids today who are just hungry for relationships. Um, they can get wowed anywhere. We want you to decorate. We want you to have fun decorating. We know you love decorating. I don't want it to be a stress for people. So mm -hmm. I would approach that secondly, hand it to somebody who loves decorating and um, focus on, on the time that you spend with kids. So Jody, thinking about decorating and budget and student resources and all that, let's talk a little bit about how can we help people? One of the questions that came in a couple different ways, how, how to get everything I need for VBS with no funds. Do you want to tackle that? What are some solutions we might have? Absolutely. You are not in this alone. And so I would reach out. Remember that BBS is an all church event, all church. We're all in this together. We're reaching our community. We're reaching our kids. So uh, many people do a registry and we like to say reg gift registries are not just for weddings and babies anymore. They could be for BBS as well. And that's where groups gift registry comes up through this. You can go online and make a BBS registry. I want to get a gospel John book for every kid. I want every child to have a, a music, some downloadable music. I want every kid to have the buddies, whichever things you want, put on this registry, send that out to your church with QR code. People can then go in and in a sense, purchase. They're purchasing it online. So they're not purchasing it and delivering it. They're going to put funds into your VBS registry. And then you can get the things that you want for your kids and the resources that you want. So people are used to this. People are used to this again with weddings and babies. Um, some churches set up a, an Amazon thing for their pool noodles and snacks. And that's that works as well. So donations and registries are an easy, easy thing. Another thing that a lot of churches have great success with is um, sponsorships. Uh, my parents are senior senior citizens and they go to a church with a high number of those <clears throat> and they will sponsor <clears throat> their church sets up a sponsor of crew and i think it's like 25 dollars you can sponsor a crew and it gives a crew of kids all the resources that they need <clears throat> so that's a great way to additionally help your church see this as we're all in this together we want to get these things to kids for whatever the, the resource is <clears throat> additionally sorry that's frogging <clears throat> you're not in this alone because you have <clears throat> this great team of BBS people around you. And that means that in your community, and Sharon, you mentioned this before, decoration, people are sharing supplies, decorations. So you may not need to buy the big backdrop because the church down the street who had BBS two weeks ago, they're going to give you their giant backdrop or some of their decorations. So definitely network with other churches to see what they have left over. Some churches may have extra products like um, music CDs or a DVD or download cards that they, they have to have a few extra. They can't return them so they can bless your church with those. So there are so many ways that you can stretch your budget um, very, very easily um, within a very painless way. Absolutely. Well, we're going to dive into volunteers here. We have a couple more things in our last five minutes. Um, so couple of volunteer questions are, when should I recruit volunteers? I say start early. This summer will be my 34th year directing VBS. I've had a lot of years of volunteers and um, I'm always thinking about people that I see on Sunday mornings at Target, at, you know, in their everyday life, people who are good with kids to be thinking about volunteers. But I do encourage you, especially for our first time directors, it's never too early to start. 
And depending on how many kids you're going to be serving, the more kids, obviously, the more volunteers you're going to need. One question that um, I want to answer just right up there is a strategy that's worked well in our church is we have a larger VBS program and we need to have a lot of volunteers to keep our crews one to five. And we go through periods where we um, close down VBS registration because we pause to say we if we get 10 more volunteers, we can take you know, 50 more kids or something for every five kids. And so that has been a good strategy. It, as Jody said, VBS is a churchwide event. And so you need to get support from your pastor, your your elder board, your um, whoever your powers that be are to get behind in getting those volunteers recruited. And it really is an awareness for a church when you have to pause taking kids because you don't have enough volunteers at that part. And that is really a heart tug for people. It's worked great for us. Um, there are there are um, tools that you can use as far as volunteers. There are, there's going to be a recruiting video coming out in the next little bit here. Um, another question that was asked very specific was, I don't know if I could run the pre-K program with volunteers, meaning people that don't have previous experience as caregivers. Now I will tell you, yes, you can. At our field test at group, we do this every year. We have in preschool, we have mostly, I would say middle school kids that are helping us there. At my own church, we run our entire preschool VBS, which is almost 150 kids, all with volunteers and senior citizens. We have some great grandmas and grandpas that jump on the team. It's very possible. We have provided a resource that is so easy to use. And I say this all the time. If you love kids, love Jesus and read, you can be on our VBS team because group makes it that easy. And um, Jody, what would you say about best way to recruit volunteers? You mentioned it earlier. Ask in person it, it it never fails i mean and this is coming from somebody who is a volunteer when someone says i love watching you help in the nursery at easter what do you think about helping year round in our preschool oh they, they saw me they noticed that i did something it feels really good it doesn't feel like you're being asked to do something hard so i think you you cannot be the ask in person works 99% of the time. Yeah. And we have a little um, tool we're sticking in the chat for you. This is a 90 second volunteer invitation that Joni and Julia on our team will model for you. So you're gonna wanna save that link um, to use at your church. Um, and we're going to wrap up with a couple of miscellaneous questions here. Um, one, uh, Jody, I wanna see the gospel presented every day. We <laughs> never know if the same kid is going to be back each day. How yeah. do we handle that in scuba? We, we have found over many years that <clears throat> the relationships that you build with kids, it's really important to know where they're at in their understanding of things of faith. And so that's why we, for the past 30 years, have been putting that on day four. And that allows the crew leader to really get to know the child, build a relationship, so that when they have that faith conversation, it it genuinely makes more sense to children. So that's why we put it there. But we also realize that every church is different. And so there, this year in your closing, we have a Jesus connection. It's the Bible story did not mention Jesus. We have some Old Testament stories. We have a Jesus connection on those first two days, which really opens the door. If that's where your church would do some kind of a gospel presentation, that would be a perfect spot for them. So we have actually added that in for churches who want to have that every day in the closing. Great, thank you. Another question that we got was, um, we've never had a skit before in our VBS. Tell me about the skit. When's it supposed to take place? Two things on that. The skit is included in the sing and play um, leader manual. So you can have it if you've got talent to do the two roles that are in there, or there's an option to purchase a DVD version of the skit if you have are short on volunteers or you just don't want to have to take that part on. At my church, we like to do it during sing and play splash right after the Bible buddy has been introduced because then kids know the verse and what's happening for the day. And then it's just kind of fun to have that little energy piece come in so that you can truly put it in anywhere during sing and play splash. But at my church, we prefer to do it after they know what the story and the Bible point is going to be for the day. We have another question, and this is I'm going to send over to Tracy. How do I download the videos? Um, if you purchase the plus digital version of the starter kit, you have access basically to a 
digital version of the complete starter kit, including the videos, including the music, the audio music, the music videos, the buddy intros, everything is available in the digital download center. And I'll load a link here in a second to uh, the digital download center. If you haven't already visited the access code to unlock that content on the digital download center, if you bought the plus digital kit is actually on a sticker on the inside of the can lid. Uh, so you can just follow the instructions on there. It's really simple. And I would add also uh, that this is something that you would want to share with your team, share your login to that digital download center, because there's, there's nothing that they can mess up. Those it's, it's for downloading and viewing. They can't upload anything. They can't change any files. And it makes it so much easier for you as a director that you can just share that with your team and they can all go get what they need. So your media people can go get their music. Your decorating people can go get uh, decorating content. Your, all your station leaders can get their leader guides. They can view them online or they can download it to their own computer. And you don't have to be that person that's doing all the work of divvying up all those different things. Just hand them that, that login and they can go get what they need. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're going to finish out our time with, we had a couple of training questions. And the first one was, does group have any options to train my team? Yes, there is a general training piece included in your director manual in your starter kit. It's got some key decorating videos on your um, ultimate director go to DVD as well. That makes training super easy. We also have this year our in-person training is back. We have regional scuba fun shops. Um, we are, we have 14 of them across the country this year. And if we do have two more weekends of those coming up on April 6th and April 13th, and you will actually get to go through day one of Scuba VBS, you'll get to try out the rotations, the student experiences, you'll get to network, you'll get to see some of the key decorating pieces, you'll get to experience a really cool devotion that you then can take back and do with your team. So in the chat, we will put a link to Scuba Fun Shops. And I just want to say this, that training your team is important. I have learned in 30 some years of leading VBS that a trained volunteer is more likely to come back and return to your VBS team the next year. And so make sure that um, you do take time to train your team. And we will open it up for our last moments. Are, are there any other questions in the chat right now? I think you're caught up. Teams. Yay for teamwork makes the dream work. Well, with that, we want to leave you with how to be in touch with us. As Jody mentioned early on, you are not in this alone. Scuba divers all follow one unwavering rule, and that is you dive with a buddy. That means never jumping into the water alone, and it means discovering the deep blue alongside a friend. And the team at group is your dive buddy for the 2024 VBS season. And on screen, you can see how to be in touch with us. You've met Jill, Phil, and Susan. They are your go-to person. Person. They um, connect with people in different states. We are here to serve you truly. And so never, ever hesitate to reach out um, any at any time. We're here. We will. If we don't know the answer, we will find the answer to what you're looking for. And I'm going to ask Joni if she will pray us out today. Oh, I'd love to. Thanks, Sharon. I'm so excited that there are all these people here to dive in to scuba through this next year and all the lives that will be changed and touched. So uh, will you pray with me? God, we give you such big thanks for uh, the teams of people that you're already planning and, and the kids that you know and their families that will be touched by Scuba VBS this summer. So we ask that you take away any fear or uncertainty that people might have and let all of us take a little leap of faith and maybe risk some things that we aren't sure of, but we want to give a try. God, you are in charge and you know um, how you're going to work this summer. So we give you thanks for that, praise for that, and just give you a giant uh, boatload of thanks for all our volunteers and directors and station leaders and everyone who's going to be a part of this because it's going to be an amazing summer and we're all in this together one big batch of buddies. So we give you thanks for that because you're our, your ultimate friend and uh, one that goes along with us. So Lord, we give you thanks and uh, 
just pray these all in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And remember, you can reach out at any time. Have a great rest of your day.